Hello and welcome back to City Planner Place where we are building the city of Ashland in Clearwater County. And we are currently looking at our well-signed but uh, unfortunately abandoned Torgersons. And this is really a, a good, good example of what we're going to take care of today. Today we are going to do a great deal of detailing and fill in some residential zoning that we have in the city. So I've got a number of things lined up for today. We're going to fix some of the issues we had with the tram line. We're going to fix the power plant, uh, the concrete underneath there. We're going to redetail our, our uh, mansion for the Ashland family and a number of other small uh, fixes throughout the city to make this place feel more alive. So I wanted to start here because I was an absolute knucklehead. In the, and in the previous episode, I added an extra sign here and I... <laughs> I'm not exactly sure where my head was at. So I added this sign and I said, oh, this is great. <laughs> and you know, it's not great, it's something. <laughs> so I don't think that we're gonna eliminate it. What we're gonna do is relocate it. And you know, clearly signage is gonna be of, of, of the utmost importance to the dealer. So why not give them another sign? They're out in a rural area. So, of course, if they can get their sign, they're going to take it. And, of course, I moved the wrong one. <laughs> so, that's, that's fine. So, we'll rotate this one to be parallel to the road. There's another sign for this building as well. So, I think it would make a lot of sense to have this sign in front of the building, just like the other one. So now we have that there. And you might be thinking, why are you putting this fancy signage on a building that's clearly abandoned? Well, it's abandoned due to a lack of workers. And that is an unfortunate situation that we are going to try to remedy today. But I had someone in the, di in the Discord server mention, if you move this, it should come back to life. It does not. <laughs> well, you know, you try. Well, there is one way to take it back to life, and that is to clone it. So that is what we're going to do, and hopefully this won't ruin by the end of the episode. Interestingly, it's pink now. <laughs> I don't really understand why it's pink now. Green? Okay. <laughs> well, I don't like these weird colored ones, so we are going to just... Wait until we get our traditional gray building, gray white building, and call it. So the other thing about this building that uh, you know a number of people called me out for was the fact that we have an active harvester <laughs> right here. So we're gonna move this. Let me put that in a field, and we can have just two pieces of equipment for sale here. I think that's totally fine and totally reasonable. So. Another thing that people have been pointing out for a while now is that there is no concrete underneath these two power plants. That's that's pretty weird. <laughs> I think that we can all admit that that's pretty weird. So we're going to change that. So I've downloaded some really neat assets at the suggestion of some of the folks on the Discord server. So we have these large concrete slabs. Now, 16 by 18 is probably too big. But this right here might be just about right. Now, the weird thing about this is that it's a transit asset, technically. So, we have some issues. So we'll throw Anarchy on. We'll place that. And the thing I really like about this asset is that it gives a nice clean line. Oh, that is beautiful. Look at that. So the other thing that we might want to put around here is some fencing. We actually have a really great fence that comes with natural disasters. So we're going to use that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our fence mode and then go into our settings here and make sure that the anarchy settings are correct. And you can see that we can place this very easily.
Okay, so now we have our gate here, and I'm going to include that. Okay, and then we need one more piece of fencing. Now, honestly, it'd probably be ideal to have two, but it's not going to fit just right. And I think that will be good enough for me. <laughs> it'll pass. Okay, now it'll pass. Yeah, I like that a lot. Now, the one thing that I messed up is now the concrete's a little bit off. That's all right, though. We can clone. Kidding. We are not going to clone that. We're just going to try to search for it and make it work. There we go. Ah, I love this. This is awesome. It looks so much better. And, uh, you know, we could... Obviously, we could pl uh, plop some vehicles in there if we wanted, but I'm not overly concerned about that. I'm more concerned about this looking like a functioning facility, and I think that helped. I think that really did. So, from there, there was another issue that was pointed out on a number of occasions in the comments, and I want to respond to it, and that is these tram lines going into the parking lot. And so I looked back at the mod page, and this is a known issue with this mod. And the author of the mod has stated that they're going to fix this, but right now they cannot. So the best, or right now they have not yet. So the best that we can really do is we can go into one of our one unit wide roads and have a one way in and out and upgrade these. And they're gonna look a little silly. It's probably better than the alternative. So to fix this, there's a couple things that we could do. We could go into traffic manager and, and ban that uh, the crossing in this area, but I don't really want to ban the crossing. I want people to feel comfortable crossing here. What I'd rather do is get rid of the crosswalk. So I'm going to go into here, look for the color of the dot and eliminate that crossing. I'll do the exact same here thing here. Blue will eliminate that crossing. There'll be a little line there, but that's okay. Do the same thing here. All right, so we do have some decals and I'll just, I'll forgive that <laughs> because there's not much uh, that I can do about it. So I'm also gonna be kind of looking through here nervously because <laughs> this has been a very difficult episode for me to record. Um, I had my save file corrupt. So I got lucky and had an auto save that happened to work. Um, without the autosave, I probably would be in a really, really rough spot. Normally, I save, I take all of my save files as soon as I'm done, and I add them to a Google Drive that contains all of my saves for all of my builds, and I put that on, uh, I, I put that on, I, I, I make that available to all of my Patreon supporters, um, regardless of tier, whether you, whether you're giving a dollar or twenty dollars, um, and. Uh, I forgot to do it. <laughs> so it's kind of the, the perfect storm of bad things happening all at once. Um, so I got really lucky. So as uh, since we're over here already, I want to fix some things. I know that I can't really do much about this wonkiness with the, the curb. I tried for like a half an hour. So I was able to load into this and it, it got corrupted as I added mods or moved mods and was monkeying around generally with this. So I'm uh, <laughs> nervous. But what I want to do is clean up this line and I think I can easily do that with this new mod that we have with our concrete paths. So again, gonna go in here, go into my topographic view, clean it up. Look at that, nice and straight. That's a, that's, a, that's a nice straight line. I'm, I'm very happy with that. Now we don't need that funky landscaping. It works just fine. So another area of, that I want to think about some of that chain link fencing, number of comments have talked about it around the ball fields here, and we're gonna do that. But the other thing that I've noticed is you'll sometimes see people walking onto the ball field, acting like this is a path. I don't like that. So. We are going to back this off just the scotch. Be really careful. Oh, we still have that. Well, for what it's worth, I think if we're going to have some some craziness, I like it over there more than it'll, than uh, over here. So we're going to leave it there. <laughs> so it's 
imperfect, but uh, maybe we can discourage them a bit with some chain link fence. And again, we're going to go into our just regular old vanilla chain link fences. So we could get wild about it, but I, I, I really just want to keep people who are in the ball field in the ball field. Whoa, interesting. Managed to make that tree disappear. <laughs> that was not what I was trying to do. Put it back over and over and it's just not liking it. Okay, I had anarchy up and that was the issue. So there is this weird connection over here and I think I have a I think I have a solution for it. So what we're going to do is increase our brush to 15. Get a nice hard edge. All right, so I am really going to struggle to eliminate this little section right here unless I'm okay with the concrete being off. Now I, I think I might be able to use my concrete trick again, so I'm going to give it a shot. That does not work. <laughs> so we are kind of stuck with some wonkiness here, which is unfortunate, but not the end of the world. We'll just uh, leave it there and uh, maybe employ our favorite solution for these sorts of issues, a tree. <laughs> there we go. That is a good solution in my mind. It works. So I think we're in a better spot with the high school so I think we're going to move on from here. And so we've got this fixed here. We've got a little bit of wonkiness. We could try to fix that. It's probably not going to happen. When the new drive aisles are released, I will update this. Uh, that's something I do want to stay on top of. The only way to, to really avoid this because... So basically, they're using the tram network as the underlying base network for this entire parking lot uh, uh, mod. So the way I could avoid it would be to actually switch and instead of having this uh, this tram network go right by the high school, I can reroute. I care more about the route being correct than the, uh, the road looking perfect, I suppose. So this is our solution. And we, we kind of did the exact same thing over here. So we're going to use node controller again. So control N, go into here. We're just going to eliminate all of our markings here except for maybe that blue one. Well, we need the green one too. And we'll get rid of the marking here because that one's not at all reasonable. Either way, whenever there is an, a junction of a road, it's a legal crossing. So technically, if you see that there is no crosswalk at a place like this, you can still cross. No one no one can prevent you from doing so. So that's not, that's not a thing. <laughs> So next, I want to get some sort of barrier in between Walmart and these apartments. I think that both Walmart and the apartments would find this desirable. So let's see what we have for walls. Okay, so we are going to use prop line tool for this again. We will have our wall option. We're just going to wall off this entire area. Let's make sure that it's good and good and straight. There we go. So that would provide a degree of separation uh, from from the uh, from the Walmart uh, for the residents and vice versa. So I think it's a good thing. Now here again, the person who suggested this 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 concrete mod, I just want to give him a hug because I am just enamored but with it. All right, this is one of those uh, fun ones where I forgot where it was and uh, it was because I didn't have all on. So now I need to find a size that's gonna work well for this. And the length is kind of a kind of a tricky thing with this because all the ones I have are pretty large. So I'm curious if I just go ahead and have an oversized placement, how it looks, it looks just fine. So we have certainly increased the, uh, the impervious on this site. Now we have trees that are kind of just dipping into 
concrete. So we're going to need some, we're going to make sure we have some planters in this area. This is perhaps not the ideal solution for this area. Uh, I, I would personally prefer that they are living in a place with a little bit more, uh, I guess a little bit more space to, to breathe, but it does work. Uh, and uh, I think it's pretty believable that this sort of development would be in close proximity to this retail location. So uh, we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. So one of the things that was mentioned in the comments that I completely agree with is these St. Charles streetcars, even though they're super cool looking, are really slow. And that's because that's the default, the default speed if we go into our advanced vehicle options and look at the trams, we're using the St. Charles streetcar number one. Uh, and the max speed is eight miles per hour. That's <laughs> horrendous. In fact, it, you could you could run faster. So let's increase the speed. So these all have the ability to go at least 30 miles per hour now. And I think that that is going to improve the experience on this line and hopefully attract more passengers. So the other thing I want to do is we have all of these streets that uh, they're mixing into traffic which means that they're slowing down traffic when they're stopping. That's okay for a local side street, but on Main Street, which you can't see the label for, so let's fix that. So on Main Street, you end up with these backups uh, that can occur. So right here is gonna be one in, where there is actually two streetcars behind one another. And I thought this guy was gonna go behind, but he didn't. <laughs> so not to worry I guess so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through we're gonna grab a tram road and we're gonna make some modifications here so I did do one thing so I brought back network skins because color changer didn't work and uh, I really wanted to, to to be able to do something special with these so right now let's let's set this to night what you can see is we, we had these boring old streets with boring old street lights, and I want to change it. So we're going to remove parking here and operate within the same right of way, have a four lane road with tram tracks in the center. And I want to change things up a little bit. So I want to change the light. I want to slightly change the color. We'll make it just a little bit darker. And really that's about all I want to do here. So we're going to have these nice, fancy Parisian lights only showing up on one side of the road there. I wonder if there's anything we can do to change that. But a bare minimum, we need to reduce the distance so that there's more illumination, especially if we're only going to have it on one side of the road. Interesting. So this is changing the side of the road and there's nothing I can do about it. That is going to bug me. <laughs> wonder if I switch to... <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how I change that. In fact, I'm going to say it's probably not possible for me to change that, which is unfortunate. But if you have an idea of how I could do this, I guess let me know in the comments because I would love to be able to make a change. So the idea here is that we're going to make the downtown area feel a little bit more special. So I did turn off my collision near the park because I didn't want to destroy the entire park, <laughs> which was certainly up for grabs there. So now we have one way, so I might just leave the one ways, but I will leave that Parisian lamp around here. That's nice. Then that feels good around the park. So I like that a lot. And this does retain my settings so I can go right back, back and forth between the two of these. And I'm, I'm converting this to a one way to be a loop that people could do in here. So we'll go back to our two lane roads and we're going to run this past the high school. Oh, kidding. We're going to add a bunch of one ways. <laughs> That is not at all what we want to do. 
Okay, so now it really it's only this one street that we haven't upgraded. So I think we're just gonna upgrade all of the tram roads at this point. We might as well, might as well. So we've got that set up and those are collectors now, which is kind of the other interesting dynamic. Now we're introducing roadway hierarchy into the city, which is something that we haven't had before. We've had roads functioning in certain ways, but we haven't necessarily had uh, that formalized with the lanes. So this is a good thing. Look at that big postal truck. That's cool. I like that. All right, so now our tram network should be much better. I did notice that I made a slight mistake way over here. Uh, so next to the grocery store, I had an in my my change has impacted the zoning a bit. So I just want to clean this up. We don't want to leave anything odd behind. Here we go. And I like the the difference in color. I think it, it adds some visual interest that makes it feel like this is new, at least newer than what was in the, in the rest of the area. Okay, so we're making some good progress towards fixing some of the things that I wanted to take care of. I do also want to look at the garbage. Ah, it's not emptying. <laughs> so we are going to turn our emptying back on. Also going to keep looking around. Every time I think I got all of these bad boys, there's another tree just sticking up in the middle of this area. It's always a couple. So next, what I want to take care of, so I talked about these wetlands back here and I tried to kind of kind of cheese it a little bit. Well, why are we why are we cheesing it? We can use some assets to make this look more reasonable, more realistic. So what I have is I have some long grasses and some cottontails. And I think that that's really going to help this feel more believable. And let me stop relying on find it and just go through our normal menus because it's probably going to be easier, truthfully. Okay, river reeds. So we're going to place a few of these. And to me, that looks very, very, very um, water-like. It's what you'd see if, the, if, the, if there was wetland there. And then we're going to place some longer grasses, assuming that no one would mow this. And I just think that that looks a little bit better. Look at those grasses just blowing in the wind. I like that. I think that it, uh, <laughs> it's pretty wild. So we have our topo lines on, and I think it would be easier to, un to, to, to fully get it. This would be land that would likely be a public outlot. So the city would maintain this, clean it out, things like that. So, but, but this would be for the benefit of the residents in this area. They could look back and they would see this interesting kind of overgrown area in their backyard. And uh, not bad, not, not bad at all in my mind. I'm wondering. No willows. I, I I don't know why I keep thinking that I've picked up a willow asset. <laughs> I clearly haven't. All right. So from there, we've got all of this area over here that we need to convert into a residential neighborhood. But I've been wondering how we're going to deal with this transition in between the neighborhood and kind of the rural area. So one of the nice things with our... Uh, with our, with our new menu here is that it gives us the ability to take a look at our roads in a, in a I guess, a, a more understandable way in my mind. And one of the things that you can see is that we have these two lane country roads and we have all these dirt roads. And I think it would make sense to convert these to paved country roads. Uh, I think that in a city, well, just in general, you're, you're going to see more paved country roads and then maybe going up to homes, you might see some dirt roads, but even then, they're kind of few and far between. So I think I'm gonna go through here and convert most of these roads into country roads, and then we're gonna clean this area up a little bit. Okay, so you might've noticed that I left this main road here, still as a local street. We wanna change that, but I wanna use this two lane country road. And the main reason for that is the speed, and I'll show you the speed difference in just a moment. 
Okay, so when we zoom in close, you can see that this, this two-lane country road is 65, which is the same speed as the highway. These roads, uh, they're not labeled, but if I go in the traffic manager, I can see it's 30 miles per hour. So, you know, less than half the speed, much slower, much more reasonable in my mind. So now you see that there's like kind of this mix of, of weird dirt road and not dirt road, and it's kind of ugly. I, we're going to fix that. So what we're going to do is go back into our surface painter. And I think that we're just going to use a large brush. Just kind of eliminate everything that we've done ourselves through this area and think about it fresh. So what we're going to do is take this down all the way to 15. And most of what I'm going to do is going to be removing painting through here. So you can see that, for instance, in this field, maybe I'll make it bigger for this. There is, for some reason, a bit of dirt, but only in the middle. There's one of two ways I want this to go. I either want there to be dirt everywhere or dirt, dirt nowhere. And I think dirt nowhere is probably easier. And then along these roads, unless there is a reason for it to connect, I'm going to eliminate the dirt alongside. And I'm okay with a bit of imperfection here. I just don't want the entire thing to be weird and imperfect. So we're going to allow some of it, but eliminate much of it. Oh yeah, this is already looking better in my humble opinion. And I don't know that this is ever going to be 100% perfect, but it can be pretty darn good. And I think that that is where we've taken it to. So just a couple of finishing touches there. And maybe right here as well. Good. I think we've got every, every place. Now, the one thing that we haven't done is converted a couple of these roads and that's because I think that these should still be city roads. So we're going to copy our existing roads here and convert these over. And we're going to use our node controller to make this right. So we'll add a node there and then we can convert this small segment and then we can use move it to adjust the location. And I'm just going to notch this up just a bit and then we'll go into node controller again eliminate that crossing there in fact why we just eliminate everything we could try our best to you know well maybe not do that <laughs> i didn't mean to rotate those so we could try to get that taper to be a little bit better that's not too bad. The sidewalks are a little bit distracting. There's not a ton that we can do about that. Short of using a different kind of road. Maybe, whoops. I don't know what I just did there. <laughs> we're just gonna, we're gonna ignore that. We could use our, yeah, our big streets. That said, I think we, we might just call it good enough right there. I think that looks all right. And we're gonna do the exact same thing over here. It's a little bit funky looking, but it will do the trick. And I think we're going to leave the country roads alongside here and kind of just merge into those city roads. Eventually, you know, when any of these are urbanized, the city would obviously love to see these come in as urban streets. Um, but it's not unheard of to see that rural section there for quite some time. There we go. I think that that makes it a bit more believable. It tapers down. Uh, the, the one thing I don't love is that makes it easier to kind of whip around that corner. So that would be the one uh, caution, I guess, that I would have against doing what I'm doing right now. But it's already done. This right here. So what we've created is a very dangerous road. <laughs> so speed differential is one of the most dangerous things that you can encounter as a motorist. 
uh, or, uh, you know, just in general. And it's one of those things that, you know, if, if you're going 30 and someone comes at you at 65, that's dangerous. And when we just watch this person get smoked, <laughs> at least they don't seem overly concerned. I'm not sure why you're walking right here. There's no sidewalk. You're walking in the grass down a rural road, down Riley Road. You are on Church Street, which is, that's a, a scary road. Elizabeth Brown, you ought to uh, find another way to get to work. Where are you even going? What? Wow. Okay. You know what? <laughs> it's, it's working. 21 households. No way. No way. That is no. <laughs> that's, that's a no. So let's see, high density residential household, realistic population, okay, one. And that changes things up a bit. Or it should. Ah, now, it, now it's taken. So I think I just uh, eliminated Elizabeth's house. But it's good that we're over here because I want to make some changes. So I don't like what I did over here. There's a lot of issues with this property. First of all, we've got issues with what should probably be a hedgerow, but instead we put up this fence and then some trees and did some things, things that I don't love. We also have this crazy garden over here. And I use surface painter, but probably the thing that I did that was the most controversial and most hated in the previous episode was I got rid of these beautiful cliffs that Exy left here for us to enjoy and for the Ashlands to enjoy. And I'm going to bring them back. I, I regret doing what I did, softening these. It was a mistake. Sometimes you've got to admit your mistakes. There we go with those beautiful cliffs. Once again, they are back. So we are back and we are back for a very, very, very specific purpose, and that is to make this feel a little more believable as a mansion. So one of the things I wanna do is change the road that's leading up here. I think I picked up a, a really nice asset. I got, I got this cobblestone lane, and we are going to remove all of the lighting from this lane. We're doing that because we're gonna customize it all. And actually, I am going to come back to this. I'll leave you in suspense for a moment because it would be a great time to get this filled in and let this develop while we are working on our new neighborhood. So in this neighborhood, I do wanna have a unique lamp again along the streets. So let's go back to night mode and take a look at what we're working with. So I'm imagining this as a historic district that would have a different flavor and flair than maybe the rest of the city. And I think that having these lights would be a way to, to, to accomplish that. That's it. These are really spread far apart. And I want to make sure that there's no dark spaces. You see that 33 meters is just a little bit too much. I think 30 is what we used before. And it illuminates most of the street. We might even want to go a little bit tighter doesn't really feel like anything is changing. <laughs> but I don't see any, any dark spots, at least on one side of the road. It's kind of unfortunate the way this is working out. So this actually does a significantly better job, obviously better on one side of the street. This is this triple post lamp. In fact, I think we can even space these a bit further apart. So that's what we're gonna do through this neighborhood is have these triple post lamps. So why don't we get all of our roads in this area upgraded? Okay, and you can kind of see our new area coming to life, but it's hard to see at night, so let's switch back to day. And 10.55 sounds as good a time as any. Now, we still have this area right here that we were contemplating for a variety of uses, but I've decided to do the absolute worst possible 
solution here, and that is to add a cul-de-sac. <laughs> so I don't like cul-de-sacs. I think I've mentioned that on a number of occasions. What we're gonna start out with is this kind of looping treatment, and from there, we will have a cul-de-sac. And I picked up this cul-de-sac bulb, and I think I'm actually gonna use node controller. Oh, that is not what I expected to happen. So we will just convert that all to a cul-de-sac bulb, then bring that down, add a node, and why don't we actually use the suburban streets here? We'll make it a bit different. And then I wanna shrink this up. Okay, so now we have a nice, I guess if you wanna call it that, cul-de-sac bulb. And you might be wondering, what are we going to do with this? You can't zone on it. And I'm going to shrink it up a little bit more. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use our Rico to plop something back here. I don't love doing that, but I think that this is appropriate in this particular area. So we do have a couple of mansions. I don't like that one. I think we'll continue to stick with our European mansions. We'll just bring that back here. Probably gonna have to go into our Rico settings. Maybe it'll be okay. Make it historic. And we'll see if it sticks. So with that said, I want to have a little district here, which will be a mansion district. And kind of closer to the courthouse, we're gonna do the exact same thing. And this would, you can imagine this being where the judges live, some of the lawyers, they can walk to work and they have excellent views of the water, which you figure they'd probably care about. And I might actually extend this down to Courthouse Square. Yeah, that's going to be a, a nice solution there. Eventually, it will probably spread down here. Once we make these roadway connections, we never actually did that. So let's apply our district policies. So we'll go into here, set our, our, our district themes rather. We'll enable themes, always keep downtown brick, but we're gonna get rid of historic. We'll set mansion district, do the exact same here thing here. And that's just gonna completely change the vibe in this area. And I forgot to upgrade these roads. So we're gonna do that now. And another thing before I forget it, I was complaining a whole bunch about all of these props all over the place here. And uh, one of the things that was pointed out again in the Discord server is that if I look for the paths, the park life paths have two options. There is the park path, and then there is the park path prop list. So I can upgrade these and eliminate all of those paths and props and then go on my own, which is the route I would like to go. We're not going to work on these today, but we are going to work on them in the near future. But in the meantime, I don't want to forget. So there we go. <laughs> so we're just going to go through here. I don't think we're going to have any commercial in this area. We don't really need commercial. So we're going to just zone this and then basically walk away. I got a little bit carried away maybe with the zoning <laughs> and zoned some places where maybe we shouldn't have it. Looks like our mansion disappeared. Um, so what I might do is see what I have in the ploppable buildings. I don't think I have plop the growables and I don't think I want it because of some of the problems that it can create for you in terms of abandoned buildings just never going away or you dezone and a building just stays there forever. I'm just... I did that in Bluffside Crossing and I really didn't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to avoid it. So a way that we can figure that out is to put this here. So just kind of flipping through here makes me quickly realize that we do not have the assets that we would need to make this work. So it's unfortunate, but that's kind of where you're at sometimes, unfortunately. So we're gonna let this go. I believe that we have all of our water pipes in place. We put lots of infrastructure in the ground and then let the city just absorb the cost, apparently. 
So last but not least, I do want to fix up that mansion. And I actually, before we get to the mansion, but wait, there's more. <laughs> So uh, this was noticed in the previous episode that this was off. It, it, for the city tour, I did fix that. And now it's uh, not something I can show you. I planned on fixing this, but my save is fixed. So that said, one of the things that, one of the mods that I added for this build was, uh, it's I'm trying to think. It is the uh, prop snapping. So I didn't have that included and that's a problem because you can't raise or lower props without prop snapping. But one of the things that it can cause sometimes are floating assets and you can see that these lights are floating. I can go in and I can try to sync them and boop, there they are, <laughs> they come right back. So I've tried everything to get this to work and I think the only thing I'm gonna be able to do is have a planter there So what I'm thinking is this concrete planter, small, if it's centered just so, looks pretty darn good. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into here and do our settings, select multiple. The only thing that we want would be, well, we, we just wanna make sure we don't get roads or buildings because now we can go through Highlight those and uh, just kind of suffer. <laughs> okay, so we've got those. And what I want to do now is kind of eliminate these other ones because we're, we're going to just redo it. Interesting, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. So what is that extra thing we have selected here? Huh. All right, now we've got just the light and it's post selected. We need to see where these need to go. So we'll go into night mode again. We're gonna duplicate it in place. All right, so I think at this point we all realize it's not really uh, an episode of Clearwater County unless we are redoing the lighting at Walmart. <laughs> it's something that we just really take great pride in doing as often as we can. And it's looking pretty slick. I think it looks good. I think it looks really bright. And it's 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 funny, you can see the differences now. Lighting between the areas. This new area is certainly brighter because we've spaced these lamps out a little, uh, I guess uh, to be a little bit brighter. And then we have this dark area where our suburban road is with one lowly light, not even the fancy ones, just the normal street light. This will develop over time. It's gonna take a bit. Um, and with the commercial, uh, I think I need to leave this to medium to ensure that things are not abandoning. Not enough goods to sell, that's a new one. That is a new one. That tells me that we might need to start thinking about rail and other you know, cargo, well, we, we can't do any of it. That's the problem. <laughs> we don't have the population to support it. So we're kind of just stuck. We'll have to do something. We've got to do something to get more goods to Walmart. Anyway, back to daylight so we can finish up our last thing. I'm actually going to detail the mansion. Uh, we're not going to do the parks today. I was thinking about that. I'd really love to do it. I just don't think we have time. So that'll be another episode. So I picked up some really cool hedgerow, uh, hedgerow options, which will be linked in the description. I'm gonna use one in particular that I really think is slick. Mm, that's not it, that was a mistake. <laughs> so I have props selected, but I actually want our networks because we have a network hedge. We have one that is uh, three, almost four feet, and another one that's six. So. What I can do here is go, and this is a road. I'm gonna turn off my snap twos. Look at that. That is so cool. Actually, I might turn the grid on. We'll see how that lines things up. Not well. <laughs> but this allows us to measure, so we're gonna go out 200. You no, know, 200 is approximately here. 
Oh, that is really pretty. Really, really, really like this. So this is very, it, it has the flexibility of roads. So we can just drag this over. Well, I've successfully completely botched that one. So we'll give it a shot again. So these ones are taller than the ones I just used. And I think I actually like that more. So interesting, you can't upgrade it like you would a road. So if you, oh, actually that's because I'm a, I'm a complete knucklehead. You can upgrade them like the roads. Oh, that is so cool. So let's take a look at what these look like. You can see that this creates a wall, just an absolute wall. And we're going to bring that right up to the house. Okay, so we're going to need to find some way to sneak in a garage here. And that's going to be something we need, we need to do in short order. So what I think we're going to do here is we need a two-way road. So we're going to use a one-lane two-way road. And then from here... Let's just move this, let's move this tree for a second. We are going to have this area right here. Then we're going to use some garages to set this up. So we're not going to do this. <laughs> what I think we're going to do is just grab a normal garage and plop some of them next to each other. And I'm wondering, are these ploppables or are these... Props? They're props. Great. So they have uh, a lot of cars. <laughs> Way more than anyone needs. Uh, maybe not that many, though. They'll have an eight-car garage. And we'll shrink this up. And what we're going to do here is grab this roadway network, and we want to remove those lights because we're going to add our own custom lighting through here. We're also going to use node controller and eliminate all of these markings. No one is crossing here. Same thing here. You know, maybe for this inner loop, we need to go with a smaller hedgerow. It seems a little extreme. Truthfully, in general, I think these might be a little bit extreme. Yeah. They value their privacy, but there are other ways to get it than walls of hedges. That said, maybe on the beach side, they do want that a, a little, little bit of additional privacy. Nah, they're okay. We're, we're going to take that down. They are, they're still people of the people, I guess. <laughs> All right. So I did pick up a really neat asset again. So it is a cobblestone path. And I think we're going to use that extensively through here. So they'll use that cobblestone path to get around. I'm not sure that it really fits well here, truthfully. I think it's a neat asset, but the mansion has such a clean aesthetic. I think we might not do that. So this one's going to be a little bit more challenging because the way that it, it's placing it. So I'm wondering if there's anything that we can do to improve this. The answer is probably no. Short of making our angles a little bit gentler or reducing this a bit. We'll take this down to seven meters. Okay, so a bit of path building madness there. I deviated quite a bit from my original plan. And the main reason for that is I feel like this area is really well thought out. Lots of straight lines. And it felt weird to have a meandering path. Especially when it looked as bad as it did. <laughs> so that also 
helped make my decision a bit clarify things for me. I think this looks a lot better anyway. So we have this nice path all the way around here. And one of the things that I want to have on here on the property would be a guest quarters. So this is going to require a bit of trickery to make this work because we're going to need a road. And truthfully, maybe we'll just come off the other side in much the same way that we came off over here. And I'm going to toggle zoning on this other road to prevent zoning from occurring because we're not going to let anything zone over here anyway. And I want to be very deliberate with the buildings that I'm placing here. So I'm going to pause this for a minute and I have these Greek revival buildings that I think would look really great here. So they are larger buildings and as such need bigger plots of land. And I didn't provide enough space for that property. Okay, and now I'm kind of tucking this Greek revival house back here. I am realizing though that I am not very pleased with how this road's turning out. And a big reason for that is we still have lighting. I think I made a mistake here or forgot to take care of it. So we're going to none and upgrade, 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 upgrade. Perfect. And I want to make this historical so it doesn't go away. And uh, this will be the guest house and it has its own little hedgerow. Perfect. <laughs> so we can get things moving again. We should be okay there. I do want to add some more landscaping and I think that we're going to have some pretty thick landscaping back here to prevent anyone from seeing it. Now I think we're going to have some clusters of flowers that they could view out the front of their property. So rather than having a formal garden, we will have these clusters of flowers. But maybe not like that. <laughs> Right, so they've got some interesting ornamental trees they can see out their front window and it feels very secluded and very private. And that is exactly what they're going through. We'll carry the theme through back here. And then, so what I think we're gonna wanna have back here is going to be just a, a, a nice dock. So that's my game plan is we're going to build a dock right here. Now I'm going to pause this because the docks are difficult to build with the water moving. So, and this is going to be kind of a tricky build in general. Um, so I, I, have, I picked up this dock prop and it doesn't like the water. <laughs> so we're going to have to work around that. So there is a quick solution, and that is we will hold off on <laughs> part of this build until the next episode. And in the meantime, what we're going to do is we will place some public, uh, some public uh, amenities here. So my primary problem is that everything is grid snapping, and I just I cannot. Oh, I am a knucklehead. <laughs> okay, well, uh, it's one of those one of those times where you just have a mental lapse, and here's what you end up with. <laughs> so that was my primary concern. We're just gonna have to deal with this for the time being. That's nah, not the one we want. We'll have a fishing pier back here. That was painful. I'm sorry. I'm going to edit out. <laughs> most of that so if you're wondering why i sound like i just went through something it's because i did <laughs> we're bringing that back up to terrain height so it lines up same thing here so we at least have the facade of uh being able to to make a connection here 
and then we are going to add a fishing dock and we will fix this with our own homemade dock in a little bit but that little bit isn't going to be now do want to lower it though looks a lot better and we've got uh, some of the Ashlands fishing looking at the city so I like this we do need a couple of lights we're just gonna light this path that they have here So this does two things. It provides safety and security, and it also lights the path. So I guess double safety. Safety in terms of lack of people stealing from your house, and the other would be the ability to actually see what's going on. Yeah, this is looking really good. We're also gonna need some lighting over here by the garages, and we need a path connection to the guest house. Here we go. I am very pleased with the way this turned out. Now there is one more thing I wanted to add back here. Maybe this isn't necessary. And just thinking about the small things, if you had this property, the ability to be able to come out here with your friends, sit and look at the skyline would be really outstanding. The ability to go in a hot tub right off, off your house and again, look at the skyline amazing even if it is not the not the most Im not the biggest skyline in the world right now it's still your city's skyline so uh, i'm really pleased with how this turned out i think that it definitely feels more grand more complete and uh just a, a but in general kind of a better place and when we're looking at the city as a whole i think that we're in a more complete place than we were in the previous episode i'm i'm uh, very happy let's see how we've been building out you can see there's a lot of empty a lot of empty places here and i think that if we move this into the in the light oh there is a reason why there's lots of empty places we don't have enough power so why don't we curb our power usage and crank our budget Interesting, we have it cranked at night, but not during the day. And now we're good. Uh, that Now we have a ton of extra capacity. Interesting. That is a big difference. Let's go back to this. Is it really that much different at night? I guess so. I guess so. You can see that power consumption at night just goes through the roof with all the lights. So we will just pretend this is a perma daytime place right now and be happy that we're not using all of that power. So a lot of little things. We didn't get everything that we would like to get, but we got a lot done. And uh, I, think, I think the city's moving in the right direction. I think it's really starting to look good here. So hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified when I make new videos, hit that notification icon. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They help me uh, to upgrade my equipment and continue to improve as a creator. And I appreciate them. And I also appreciate you. Your likes and subscribes and sharing of the videos helps increase the reach of the channel and ensure uh, that it's continuing to grow. So. If you're doing that, I appreciate you. And uh, I want to leave you with a brief city tour, and we are going to start that right now.